Hey, hello and welcome to JP's product pick of the week. It's me, JP, and we are live. Uh, not only are we live, but we are live right inside the product page. I know it's a total mystery. What product is it going to be this week? But if you go here to this QR code or this URL down at the bottom, it's Adafruit uh, slash product 2809. Head on over there and I'll tell you why, because this is our product pick right here. It's the Adafruit LIS 3DH triple axis accelerometer. You can watch the show right inside this product page. Uh, and there it is. It is half off. So right now during this show, you can get this board for 50% off. It's $2.48. So what are you waiting for, right? Uh, so before we go any further though, let's rewind a little bit and uh, talk about what this is. Let's first of all, go grab one out of my cabinet of products. All right, so I'm being told that we're having AV sync issues, so I'm going to risk everything and hit uh, hit the toggle on the stream. So stand by. Uh, I think it's a uh, it's an issue on uh, YouTube at least. Uh, all right, I think we're back. Maybe we're even back in sync. Who knows, but I'm going to roll forward as if it's back. Wow, that was someone saying we had a four second uh, sync problem, but hopefully that corrects itself. If not, just move your head back and forth real quick and the Doppler effect will correct everything. I promise. Uh, all right, so there it is. It is the product pick of the week. week. Product pick of the week is the LIS 3DH triple axis accelerometer. This is in highly convenient and lovely Stemma QT form factor. As you can see here, in fact, I've got mine plugged in with a Stemma QT cable over to a Pi, a little QT Pi, which I'm going to use for a demo. Um, but before I go any further, let's go and have Lady Ada talk about this product all the way back, I think, in 2015, uh, and then the, the respin that we have today. So take it away, Lady Ada. This is the LIS 3DH triple axis accelerometer. We have actually quite a few triple axis accelerometers, but this one is really, really low cost and is very easy to use as I squared C and SPI, which is um, not usually you only have one or the other. Um, the cost, the price is really good. It's one of the least expensive accelerometers, it's like 10 bit. And it has a couple other cool little things built into it. For example, it has tap and double tap detection. So when you tap it or you attach it to something and then you, you thwack it, it can detect that. It knows like, oh, there was like a pulse. And so mm. you can have tap and double tap. Okay. It also has um, three analog digital converter pins. They're only like one to two volt range, but um, you know, if you just need some uh, analog inputs and you don't have some on your board, it's a, it's a really easy way to add analog inputs. Um, and it doesn't use uh, clock stretching, which the MMA accelerometers do. We basically kept seeing this chip in every single wearable teardown. If you watch the wearable teardowns that I do with Becky, this accelerometer was in everything, like literally every single wearable that had sensing in it had one of these. So I was like, okay, obviously there's something about this chip that's great. So I picked them up and yeah, they're a good workout. The LIS 3DH, this is an oldie but goodie. People love this. Accelerometer. I love this accelerometer from ST. We use it in a ton of boards. It's got tap detection. It's you know uh, got uh, you know triple axis. It's got uh, two, four, eight, and sixteen uh, G range. Uh, sorry, two, four, and eight G range. Um, I squared C. You can change the address and now in Stemma QT format, so you can plug and play it. So lovely with all of our other Stemma QT boards that we have over fifty of. Ah, I almost tricked myself. Uh, yeah, so, all right, how about I'll do a couple little demos of the board, and then I'll show you how they're coded. It's a really easy board to work with. We've got libraries in Arduino and in CircuitPython. So the first one I'll show you, this is in CircuitPython. Let me give you 
uh, just a little overhead view here. So you can see I've got my lovely little List 3DH board here. I know it's upside down at the moment. Um, and I'm gonna, you can see here it's connected up to this Cutie Pie. And then just I have battery power uh, running this. So let me, let me turn that power on. And uh, you'll see here when I tap the board, nothing happens. But if I double tap it, you'll see that my little NeoPixel turned purple. Uh, let me try that again. There we go. So single tap, nothing, just kind of generally moving it around, nothing. But double tap, it gets, once you get used to the rate of it, has fairly tight timing. There we go. It's a, I'm going, I was going a little too fast. Uh, and I, I don't think you can tune that other than the sensitivity. I don't think you can tune that timing. Um, so it's just sort of a fixed double tap. But it's pretty cool because you can, you can imagine if you have something, let's say, built into a costume or a prop or something that you don't want to get accidentally um, triggered, using this little double tap detection is actually pretty cool. Um, now, let's have a look actually at what the code is for that. So I'm going to pop over to Adam. Uh, this is, I'll leave that there just because it's nice to look, look at. Uh, this is my Atom, yeah, okay, so here is the code. This is in CircuitPython. And what you can see here is that I'm importing some libraries, including the List3DH library, and that's the heart of everything. That's what makes this board easy to work with. And here you can see I'm actually using I squared C. You can also use SPI, but I squared C works very well in this case, and it allows us to just plug in the Stemma QT cable, nice and easy. Um, you'll also notice that the sensor gets instantiated here, and then I'm setting it up to use this set tap. So there are different things you can call. You can call using it as, as the sort of accelerometer mode, uh, using it as a single tap mode. Here I'm using it as a double tap, and that's done. Uh, with two things, one setting this value to either a one or a two to say I'm single tap or double tap, and then the threshold. And that's just how hard it needs to get hit to notice. So uh, depending on the range, you can set the board into, let's say, 2G range, and then use a 40 to 80 threshold. And we have some examples here of thresholds that work well. Uh, and then that's about it. In my while true loop, all I'm doing, whoops, I just collapsed it. Well, what I'm doing right here, I'll zoom that up a bit big, bigger. There we go. If the List3DH is tapped, then I'm just simply setting my NeoPixel that's on the Cutie Pie to this sort of magenta color. I print out the word tap in the uh, serial port here just so I can watch that working. And then I also set the um, time monotonic. I was using that to just differentiate taps from one another. And then I sleep for half a second here just to keep them from uh, crowding each other so I can tell when I've successfully tapped it. So that's it for, for setting up tap detection. It couldn't be easier. Now, for another demo, what I'm going to do is let's bring, I'm going to bring my camera down a little bit because here I've got something a little more elaborate. Uh, that should work like that. Yeah. And I'm going to go full screen with that. In fact, let's go, how about, I'll go off to this corner over here. And that should work. Okay, so here what you'll see, I've got another cutie pie, and I've just kind of pushed some uh, wires into a little piece of wood here to hold things. And then I have the List 3DH board, our little triple axis accelerometer, and then I have an OLED. And you can see these are all sort of daisy chained using the Stemma QT cables. And I'm going to try to zoom out a little more here so that you can see things and I can move. I need a little bit of a little space to move this. Uh, so what I'm using this for right now, I'm just printing out the three accelerometer values on X, Y, and Z axes. And I'm also using that data to drive the display orientation. So you can see here, when I tilt it up, it's vertically oriented and I can still read it if I tilt it upside down. So this is something that we're kind of used to in some of our electronics, particularly phones and tablets. If you tilt them horizontally, they go horizontal. Uh, this is a feature that I really like having in this because if you're going to be measuring accelerometer values, you're going to be turning this thing. And rather than turning your head back and forth with it, it just updates uh, so that you can see those values printed on the screen. So let me show you what that code looks like. I actually did this one in Arduino. And what I'll do actually for a moment here is just show you, um, one second, I'll move my head out of the way there, 
push this up. There we go. Uh, so I'm just printing out that orientation data right now. So you can see uh, as I'm tilting this to the side, that's uh, default, tilt left, upside down, and tilt right. So that was just something I was using for myself as I was troubleshooting my code, trying to figure out which accelerometer values equated which orientation. And here's what the code looks like. So let me again put this uh, little image back on screen there so you can look at the, the contraption as we talk about it. So here in Arduino, uh, where is my Arduino? There it is. Okay, so what's happening in here, we're doing a, a few library imports, both for the display, which is this SSD1306 OLED, as well as for that list 3 dh accelerometer and the Adafruit sensor library. I set up my screen, I set up the list 3 dh again, as before, I'm using I squared C to set that up. Uh, and then we're going and setting this to a, I think I have it at a 2G, uh, mode. You can have different levels of uh, sort of thresholds of accelerometer value you're trying to read depending on what you're doing. If you're on a really serious roller coaster, maybe you have it up at 8 or 16. If you're doing stuff sort of here on Earth, moving things around gently, 2G works well. Um, and then you'll see I've set the display rotation to zero. And this is part of the display library for this uh, SSD1306. Then during my main loop, what you'll see is I'm getting these X, Y, and Z variables, which are based on asking the sensor for its acceleration in X, Y, and Z. And then I have a sort of elaborate little set of conditional statements here where I say uh, the sort of upside down mode is when the X is either greater than negative five and Y is less than negative five, or X is less than negative five and Y is less than negative five. So you can imagine just with this sort of face in the orientation, I have to look at X and Y and do a bunch of different uh, comparisons to see which range we're in so that we get those four different orientations. There may be a much better way to do this. It was just the one I thought of and, and it worked for me pretty well when I set it up. So uh, there you go. But you can see it works really nicely to uh, reorient this and it works very quickly. I have, I have some little delays in there and I'm printing statements out and things so it's not uh, instantaneous, but it's not bad. Um, so let's see. I think that's about it for our uh, product pick of the week. There it is. It is, I'm gonna take this one off and we can plug that into the STEMA QT board. Um, actually, before I, I do that, I do want to mention again, if we, if we take a look, uh, first of all, this is our product page. And if you head on over there during this live stream only, that'll be 50% off. So you can go pick up, I think, a maximum of 10 of them if you have really big accelerometer plans. And uh, like we always do on these pages, if you scroll down a little bit, you will get to a link for the Learn Guide. So if we look at this Learn Guide here, uh, this is the learn guide for the board, it tells you how to use it both in setting it up, the pinout, uh, as well as using it inside of Arduino or inside of CircuitPython. And if you go down to this download section of the guide, you'll see that we have a link to the application notes for the board from ST. This talks about the suggested uses, the ranges that you can use it in. As they mentioned at the bottom, this is an ideal choice for handheld portable applications such as cell phones and PDAs. And that's what you find these in. But as Lady Ada was saying, you also find them in a lot of different wearable devices, uh, anything that needs to be woken up upon movement, you can use this in, uh, as well as I think I have a thermopen thermometer for, for checking meat, and things like that. And it even has a little accelerometer that flips the display, kind of like my demo here. Um, might even be that one. I haven't taken it apart yet. But that is the a uh, little bit of info on the page there. Uh, there's our board. Uh, that's the URL if you want to go head over there and pick one up if you're not watching the show from within there. And so that is my product pick of the week. It's the LIS. I have it upside down. That's my product pick of the week. It is the LIS 3DH triple axis accelerometer. I'll put my little hang tag on there and I've got it connected up to a, uh, a board, the, pie, the cutie pie there. I'm gonna leave that on there. And I'll set this on my Stemma QT board of goodness. And that's gonna do it for today. So don't forget to head on over and get one. You have a little bit of a grace period after the show ends to 
hit go with things in your cart, but we encourage you to go buy some Adafruit stuff because it keeps the lights on around here, and we appreciate that very much. So that's going to do it for JP's Product Pick of the Week. I'm John Park, and I will see you next time. Thanks so much.